What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are covering my top finesse baits to catch bass in the dead of winter. I have some tips and some tricks, some favorite baits. Let's go. Hopefully you guys got to have a very Merry Christmas and got to spend time with your friends, family, and loved ones. Um, it's a great time of the year to reminisce, catch up, see old friends, see old family members. Uh, and now we're transitioning into the new year and uh, starting to think about cold water fishing. You know, this last week or so, most of the United States got hit with that Arctic blast. I know here it's been freezing. It's freezing out right now. Uh, I think we got down into the single digits one day. Um, a high of like 17 and a low of like seven or something, something crazy, but fishing, right? We're talking bass fishing in winter time. So that really kind of keyed us into talking about winter time techniques. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of my maybe top three or so categories for finesse fishing. And then Matt will follow it up with some of our favorite techniques uh, for power fishing, reaction fishing this time of the year. Because believe it or not, even with these cold weather, cold nights, cold weather patterns coming through, uh, a fish, a bass will still eat reaction in the water temps are down in the low, you know, mid to high 30s, low 40s. So without further ado, winter finesse fishing tips. Uh, I like to keep it fairly simple this time of the year. You guys hear that fairly often in our videos, but um, you know, cold water, cold weather, bassin, um, it just takes a different mentality. First off, you have to be committed. You gotta layer up, get your cold weather gear, make sure you have the right stuff with you. Um, but you have to go out and kind of brave the elements, right? Cold weather, freezing conditions sometimes, ice in the guides of your rods, all sorts of fun stuff, but the fishing itself can be amazing. Um, you know, the one thing that I want to stress, if you've never winter, winter fished before, or if you're trying to get confidence in winter fishing, is just slow down. Everything you think that you're doing slow enough, try doing a little bit slower. You know, the easiest way to explain this is, you know, picturing all the fish, the bait fish, everything going on, going on, down below the surface in that little ecosystem, you know, is cold, right? It's cold water. So everything is moving slower. You know, the little minnows are moving slower, the little baby bluegill, bait fish, everything is real kind of just there, right? They're not real active. Now you can trigger those bass into getting active and spooking those bait fish and such, but we'll talk about that in the next video. But for the most part, everything is just moving at a slower pace. So if I can emphasize one key thing, just slow down. Um, that's, that will be applied to all of these finesse techniques that we talk about today. So right off the bat, I simplified it to three categories. We're talking drop shot, we're talking jig, and we're talking Ned rig. Those three finesse categories. I have some different baits in those categories that will help you uh, give you some options depending on your fishery and the, and the fish, the size of fish and the bait fish you have in your fishery. But those three categories are my top three categories when I am finesse fishing in the winter. You guys know that Matt and I love power fishing, throwing that speed crank, throwing the A-rig swim baits and stuff. Uh, but today's video, let's dive into finesse tips to help you guys catch more bass when they don't want to eat that reaction stuff. So. Number one for me is going to be a jig. Now I keep it super simple, especially this time of the year. I basically only throw two, maybe three types of jigs all the way from now into spring. You know, with the cold water, those water temps really dipping, I like to fish heavy, deep jigs. So. Basically, the only two jigs that I throw, the third one I'll talk about in just a second, it's gonna be some kind of heavy football jig. You can see that's a three quarter ounce finesse football. See that, guys? Real natural colors. 
The reason that I throw either 5 8 or 3 quarter, when I'm throwing a jig this time of the year, I'm not real active with it. And this is going to apply to all of these baits. Remember I talked about slowing down? I throw it out, I let it hit bottom, and I'm just slowly dragging it. I'm not stroking a jig. I'm not popping it up and letting it fall like you would in the fall or in the spring. I'm just dragging it. I want to have good bottom contact. I, it's all about feel. This time of the year, I like to use longer rods because a lot of your bites this time of the year with those lethargic fish, they just kind of come in, just mouth it and pick it up. So all you're feeling on your rod, on the tip of your rod is just a little extra weight. You know, you don't really feel that real hard jig thump like you would in the spring or the fall, but you're gonna see your rod tip and you're just see the little bit of a, a little bit more of a bow in the rod tip, a little bit of that deflection. So those lighter tips, longer rods show that a little bit quicker than a short, you know, heavier, more stout rod. So I like to throw a little bit longer rod, but I'm just dragging this thing and I'm just ticking the bottom, tick, tick. You know, if I get hung up, I kind of pop it a little bit, tick. And then again, it's just gonna get heavy most of the time. So that is why I like a big, heavy jig, but uh, a three quarter, five eighths or three quarter ounce, real natural jig. So something really natural, either super matte brown or go to, something like that. Uh, I'll link all my favorite colors down below in the video description. As far as trailers, this is where it gets uh, really important. Again, with all these techniques, this time of the year, you wanna th be throwing baits that have dead action. Basically, not a lot of movement at all. You know, the most action I'll throw is something like this, a little twin tail grub on the back of this jig. And what this is doing, it's just down there. Sorry, it's all tangled up in the, in the skirt material. That's a Yamamoto. That's just a, a five inch twin tail grub. Now, when I'm dragging this, those little tentacles back there are just barely moving. You know, you're not gonna want something with a lot of action this time of the year. Again, you wanna match what is going on in the environment down there. You don't want this jig down there just flapping away with like a uh, pocket craw or something with a lot of movement, a rage craw, something like that. Um, but for the most part, you wanna be throwing baits with dead action. That's really, really important, especially this time of the year. So three quarter ounce football jig, the benefit of throwing a football jig versus the next jig I'm going to talk about is you do have a pretty stout weed guard on there. You see that? So when you actually set the hook and you set that hook in the roof of the fish's mouth, now you have this weed guard that actually acts as a little bit of a resistance to keep that hook in that fish's mouth. So if you're throwing those heavier jigs, a lot of times if they're out in front of the, of the mouth, you know, swinging around, you can lose those fish, but that big weed guard will actually act as a barrier to keep from throwing that jig. So that's the benefit of throwing a full-sized jig with a weed guard. The only other jig that I like to throw is that little Kitek, that tungsten micro jig. I'll link that down below. That's if you really want to downsize and, and fish a smaller compact jig. Now, probably my number... I have so much confidence in this setup right here. All this is, this is just a football head. You see that? Paired up with a Yamamoto hula grub. This is a five inch. I'll show you guys, I'll show you guys the difference between a hula grub and a twin tail grub. The hula grub, same bottom half as the twin tail grub but you have this guy right up here. And you can rig, you can actually rig this on a skirted football. It's just gonna add more body, it's gonna slow the fall. It's just gonna add more stuff to the overall presentation of the jig. But this is lights out, guys. If you haven't, get yourself some basic football jig heads. This is actually a swagger head, tungsten, heavier, more density, more sensitivity. And then I just rig that little five inch, I say little, that little five inch hula grub on there and this is what I'm dragging. Now the benefit to this, remember I talked about dragging that jig and a lot of times they just pick it up. You gotta reel down and you gotta hit them hard. You gotta get past that weed guard and you gotta jack them with your, rod, with your hook set on your, on your rod. 
having the exposed hook, a lot of times as they pick it up and they start to swim off it and they just get that pressure, that hook just sets right in the roof of the mouth. And as you feel that pressure and load up on them, it basically sets the hook you know, itself but you don't have to jack them nearly as hard. So if you're throwing a light line, say you're fishing a clear water, highland reservoir, lots of visibility, you wanna go light line, say 12, 15 pound fluorocarbon, uh, you can still set that hook without having to really rear down and, and, and set it hard. So a lot of times that is what I will start out with if I'm fishing clear water. Again, fish heavier because I want that bottom contact and that sensitivity so that's jigs guys those are my two basic trailers another great one is reaction innovations the sweet beaver there's not a lot of motion to it a lot of, not a lot of action to it um, and it just works really good when you're down there just dragging this jig again i'm fishing main lake points secondary points i'm looking for little chunk rock little areas of hard uh rock because that's what these fish are going to draw to in these cold weather months. So that guy right there, the little hula grub, five eighths or three quarter ounce finesse football, that little Kitek uh, tungsten jig, and then paired up with either a twin tail grub or a Yamamoto hula grub, and those will produce. Since we're talking about bottom contact, let's go Ned rig and then we'll finish up with drop shot because again, we. There's so many different baits on the market and you want a drop shot bait that's not down there just waving all over the place and you know you don't want to be shaking that bait erratically this time of the year. So let's talk about Ned Rig and then we'll move back into drop shot and then wrap it up. So the reason that I threw Ned Rig in here, it's just a confidence bait for me. Again, these are this is this is the time where you have to slow down. You typically have to downsize. You know, this last year, over the last two years, a lot of anglers are complaining about how tough the bite is. And we know that there's been five to 10 million new anglers purchasing fishing licenses across the country. So uh, it's simple math, guys. Our lakes are getting more and more pressure. Those fish are seeing more and more baits. So sometimes you have to do things a little bit differently if that's throwing a smaller profile, if that's throwing lighter line, if that's being you know, throwing a more iridescent looking bait, a more natural looking bait. There's all these different things that you can do to put the odds in your favor, but you have to be cognizant of it and at least address it while fishing. So slow down, downsize, and just remember that you don't want a lot of action. So you as an angler, when you're picking your baits, your trailers, remember that. And then also when you're actually fishing these baits, you know, be mindful of that. If you're dragging that jig, make sure you're just dragging it. You're not pulling it or hopping it. Uh, we're talking about the drop shot here and the Ned Rig, but you know, put that rod tip in the water so you can visibly see the ripples in the water, see how much you're shaking, how much action you're giving that rod tip, which in turn gives a ton of action to that bait. You know, Make sure that you're just basically dead sticking. You know, you're moving this thing just little bits uh, at a time, okay? So back to Ned Rigs. Uh, one tip for you guys, this time of the year, because we're not throwing a Ned Rig where we're hopping it, letting it fall like a goby or a, a crayfish shooting off and dropping down. You know, we're kind of doing that drag technique just like we're doing with the jigs. I like to throw a football head on my Ned Rig, okay? You guys have all seen the normal traditional heads. Talked about this in previous videos, right? But the football head works really well when you're doing that drag technique. Now, specifically with the Ned Rig, I want to give you guys a tip real quick that will help you guys catch more fish. Typically when I'm fishing a Ned Rig, I get fairly active with it. Now that we're talking cold water, we're talking wintertime finesse, throw that thing out, okay? Let it hit bottom and fish it almost like you're creeping a small finesse swim bait. I'm talking like a quarter turn at a time. So all this bait is doing is bumping up bumping up. You know, it's not shooting up and falling, but you're just making that bait come to you six, eight inches, you know, at a time, but it's staying on bottom. So all this thing is doing is just, just moving still down there, giving your good sensitivity with that football head. 
um, but you're you're keeping it on bottom. You're not popping it up like you would in the spring or the fall, summertime, whenever you'd fish a, a, a Ned rig traditionally. You want good bottom contact. Maybe you're throwing it with a spinner rod, so it's just a twitch, twitch. And you're just bringing that bait on bottom. You're not popping that thing up. So that's a that's a killer way to catch a lot of fish this time of the year. A lot of guys don't fish it that way, but try fishing it just like you're creeping a little swim bait on bottom, little quarter or half turns at a time to get that bait just moving forward just a little bit. Okay, as far as baits, again, keep it really simple. Dead action baits, okay? I don't want something like, you guys know that I love the missile baits, the, the Ned Bomb has that big beaver paddle tail on it. Don't necessarily want that in the winter time. You know, it still works, but I'm looking for something with just dead action, something that looks like a, a little crawfish on the bottom, just barely moving, little goby on the bottom, little bait fish, okay? Either the, the little Senko, that's the Ned Senko, little three inch, the Robo Worm, and what else? Talked about the Ned Worm, the Robo, talked about the Senko. Oh, these guys, I grabbed these. I wanted to show you guys these. We talked about these first at ICAST this year. This is the new micro finesse stuff. So you can throw your traditional TRD, your Z-Man. They work great. But if you find that your fish are super finicky, you know, we've talked about BFS stuff. We've talked about really light line. Look at this guy compared to a traditional sized Ned rig. This is the little Ned Cinco. Look at that little Z-Man micro. If you really need to downsize, look at that little guy. The fish, more and more the last couple years, I've realized that you can catch big fish on little baits. You know, we've, we've caught big fish on light line before, small downsized hair jigs, that sort of stuff. But um, I've realized that these fish, you're getting more and more pressure and we're using lighter line, we're using natural, more natural looking baits. We're doing some different techniques to try and catch these fish, trick these fish, because they've seen so many different types of baits and lures and presentations. Um, you can still catch big ones on little baits, but I thought that's really cool. So I threw that in there. But yeah, your traditional Ned rig will work, your Z-Man TRD. Um, but again, I don't want something that has a ton of, of movement, just like my jig trailers. Uh, and just like I'm gonna talk about in my drop shot baits, um, just go, with something that kind of has a little bit of float to it, if you want. If not, you can go with the Ned, um, the Robo Worm. The Cinco has a little bit of float in it, but uh, just try that technique that I talked about, just that little creeping technique, okay? And then try to get those football heads if you can. These are actually made by Z-Man. That's the football Neds, okay? So they work great. They don't get hung up as easily. They got a wider face on them than a traditional Ned head. See if I can get the camera to focus on that for you. Just a lot wider face, so it comes through rock quite a bit better. Now, last but not least, we're gonna talk about drop shot because that is another confidence bait for me. You know, a lot of times uh, this time of the year, I'm fishing deeper water. You know, those fish like to move down, put their bellies in the mud, find that offshore rock, whatever it may be, but they like to be deeper. Uh, and a drop shot is a technique that I can see a fish on a 2D sonar down below the boat, or maybe on forward facing sonar. That's come a long way the last couple of years. Uh, but you see a fish down there on bottom, you can flip this drop shot out there, go straight down, and it suspends the bait up off the bottom. Um, and it just makes it an easy meal per se for these fish. So a drop shot is my third technique that I like to throw this time of the year. Again, I'm gonna start off with dragging a jig, um, going with that bottom contact, and a stick with that Ned rig. And then if I think I can catch them up a little bit off the bottom, that's when I will go with a drop shot. Now, I have two specific baits for you that I really like to throw in the cold water. Number one, the net bait, throwing it at you guys. Junior Crush. What, you can see I, both of these baits are real small, they're three inch baits. So they're they're uh, real good shad imitating or bait fish imitating sizes. I'm not going with my six inch, my seven, eight inch straight tail worms, not this time of the year. I'm going with my shad, my baby bluegill, baby crappie, you know, sized baits. 
So this guy right here has a real flat bottom. Again, it's really important with a drop shot, what a lot of anglers don't notice or don't pay attention to is when you stop moving your drop shot, a lot of the worms just, they fall down. They, they lay uh, vertical or, or parallel to your line. They don't sit there and stay flat out. And so this bait right here has a real flat body. It's kind of a cupped body. So even if I'm giving this thing hardly any action in the water, it's still sitting horizontal and it's just slowly moving with the water movement down there. So real subtle action, real natural look, real soft bait. Um, another thing that a lot of guys don't realize is when you get into that colder water, it's gonna affect the movement of your jig. It's gonna affect the movement of your plastic, you know, your plastic worms, your trailers, that sort of thing. So uh, the softer, the better. You start getting into that harder, more dense plastic, uh, it doesn't move hardly at all in the water. Uh, it just looks real unnatural. Something that's soft, just has that real subtle kind of shimmy and shake, nothing too aggressive, uh, and that will give you more bites. Just looking natural. Again, that three inch, that guy right there, that is the Junior Crush. That is an awesome, awesome bait. Now my second bait I'm gonna recommend, this is a new bait, comes in four inch. This is actually the three inch. This is the Yamamoto Shad Shaped Worm. Again, it's that three inch profile, that bait fish profile. Okay, nothing too crazy. Just gonna run like a owner mosquito light number two hook or a gamakatsu, like a drop shot hook. You're just gonna nose hook this thing. And a trick for you guys on this guy right here, flip it upside down, put the flat side down. Again, it's gonna cup that water more than having the belly down. The belly's kind of tapered. Uh, and it just helps that bait sit perpendicular better in the water. Uh, and that little tail just sits there and does the same thing, just slowly, slowly moves. You don't want to be giving this thing a ton of action. You don't want to be hopping it, moving it very quickly. You basically want to throw this thing out there to your, your the area you want to fish, that rock pile, make their good cast, get it down in that strike zone, and then just barely move it. Again, you can drag it like the jig. You can shake it just a little bit. But if you think you're fishing it too slow, fish it a little slower. Last but not least, I totally forgot to talk about it. I knew I brought them out here. Uh, these are gonna go in the, the jig category. I talked about these, I think last year maybe, but a little hair jig. I'm gonna throw this into the jig category because it has jig in the name. <laughs> but this is the Spro hair jig. Um, comes in a couple different sizes. I like to throw the smaller size. You know, we've all, well, not all of us, but a lot of us have thrown the float and fly where we suspend a fly below a float underneath underneath a bobber uh, for send, suspended spotted bass but i found that this fish as a jig on bottom no bobber no float just down there on bottom just fishing it real slow uh, with that hair works really really good in cold water so if you haven't already try one of the little hair jigs uh, if you need to go ultra finesse and you're not getting bit on the jig try the hair jigs. I'm gonna throw those hair jigs into the jig category. We got the drop shot and the Ned Rigs. Those are my three confidence baits this time of the year when we're faced with freezing conditions, single dip digit temperatures. Uh, sometimes those fish do not want to commit to the speed crank or the A rig or the swim bait and you have to slow down. Maybe you're in a tournament situation where you have to produce bass, maybe you're small bass, but you have to produce a limit. These baits right here, natural colors will produce when all other baits won't. Guys, down below in the video description, I will link everything. If you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. Again, hopefully you guys had a very Merry Christmas. And next video, Matt's gonna talk about the, the reaction side to this video. But uh, between this video and next video, finesse and reaction, you guys should be covered for baits moving on, techniques moving on all the way through the dead of winter. As always, guys, Thank you for watching. If you learned something from this video or you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you guys on the next video.